Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sword, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. And this video today is going to be a review of a problem you've done for your activity, for your homework, a C++ object-oriented programming uh, way of doing the Super Mario Sunshine data management problem. So you've, you've already seen it, you've most likely already done it, and so I have the information over here that we need to fill in, and this is the starter runner file over here in which we need to get everything going. And things are broken because things are broken. So let me just drag this down to here. We don't need anything up till here with the game data.h. So if I build this and I try to run this, I get errors because game data.h isn't open because all you have is one file, the source.cpp. And even if I did at this moment, there, if there was a, a blank empty file, everything else would go to heck anyway. So let me just get going by setting up the .h file over here. So this is just a repeat of the previous problem, just slightly more complicated uh, stuff going on. So I call, this is going to be called gamedata.h inside of a file called gamedata, oh, I'm saying the class called gamedata inside of a thing called gamedata.h. So uh, when I do this now, I'll get different compiler errors like we said before because I define the class, I've opened the file, all those other things go wrong, but now there's no constructor, there's no func member functions, let's say there's no member this, member that, so right now everything isn't working, but at least we're on the, the track to progress here. So this .h file, oh my goodness, there's a lot going on in here. I'm, you're leaving the implementation up to me, which is you. It sounds like an old Simpsons thing. But anyway, moving forward here. We've got public data, private data, and let's, or you know, public stuff, private stuff. So let's see, game data is the class type. An integer, the number of shines. Okay, and the number of blue coins. I'll just call it coins, make it easy on myself. Okay, so that is all I need for data because I'm just maintaining two pieces of data for this game. How many shines have I collected? How many coins have I collected? So now it says I need a constructor. And where is that? Okay, initialize both member variables to zero and always, you know, so this is kind of a combined thing here. And use an initializer list. So this is basically a default constructor at the moment because it says initialize both member variables to zero so I don't have to pass in any information. I'm just gonna, when I set up my initializer list in my constructor, I am just gonna do shines equals zero, coins equals zero, and that's what that's all I'm gonna do. Okay, a public member function called get shines, which returns, it's just a get function, get shines. And since it's a get function, I'm gonna throw a const, oh, I didn't do this in the other previous example, but we didn't need it in the previous example. So a const function in C++, you get the better you get the better description here than the previous video, is that when I have a func member function that does not modify the data under the hood, call it make it a const function. And so again, C++ is weird. It has all this const correctness everywhere, and like the Python language, you know, it doesn't even have the keyword const in the slightest bit. They just say if you don't want, <laughs> if you want it const, don't change it. That's their rule. But in C++, we, there's a lot of little things that can go wrong when we throw consts around. And so maybe it's, so I say they had this whole thing back in the day that it was just to protect programmers, and it turned out to be kind of a big bust. I don't want to have a fight over it. If you're like, oh, the con I mean, it, it has its purpose, but it, it gets a little crazy sometimes with the way const works. So there's my get shines, there's my, oh, I need get blue coins. At least the public interface needs to have the get blue coins, even if I don't use blue coins for the, the name under the hood. And then I have to have an add shines function. It's a public function, blah, 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 that takes an integer parameter and adds in. So I'll just say, what well, add shines. How, and then how many shines. That is not const because we're gonna be modifying the, the object. We're gonna be modifying data once we do this, and I'll need the same here, add coins. Conus, coins, I can spell. I never can spell. I should, I should, just, I should just start admitting it. Okay, so uh, add shines, add blue coins, and then another one, a void function that is called convert blue coins to shines. And this doesn't take any parameters. 
because it's going to go and look at the, how much is you know how many shines and how many coins I have and do the conversion. It doesn't need any extra information and it's modifying the object so I don't need to make them const. So right now with just this .h file, if I did everything correctly and I didn't spell anything wrong or anything, I should hit the compile stage and go through that perfectly fine and it should break down Oops, add blue coins. Oops. Add blue coins. That's what I get for trying to shortcut myself. And and my oh, and then and then um uh, Oh goodness, I'll have to set this up. Can Mario go to, where is, I, th I swear it was in there. Can Mario go to Corona Mountain? And that's just basically checking how many shines are, how many shines you have. Let me do that. Okay, um, and that's a const function because it's not changing anything. So there you go, we all make mistakes, right? Okay, so I've, I've now, <laughs> I'll, have, I'll fix this up. Uh, maybe not in the video, but it'll be fixed up. But you won't even notice it. It'll, it'll just be broken here on my side. But now we have everything we need. Everything compiles properly because ever, all the function calls at least can't, at least have a declaration here. They're not defined. So when we go to the linker stage to bring everything together in the end, that's where all everything goes wrong and every one of my functions one two three four five every one of my seven functions gives me an unresolved external I have seven linker errors going on here okay so now now that we've hit that stage now it's just a, it's basically just how do we fill in all this information and how do we make this work so let me just go ahead and do everything so the CPP file sets everything up for me and so I don't have to type all that stuff in and so now let's go ahead and fill in all the details. All right, so I went and fixed that up. I added that function. You will never notice that. Four people opened it, uh, but they probably didn't go so far as to set that up. I didn't get an email yet going, what's wrong with that? So thank goodness for me. Okay, so let's come back here and fill in all the details. So we said for this constructor of ours, set up both member variables to zero. And remember we have, uh, so what you want to do, this is another one of those things, a little tricky things that has I've seen cost people days of their <laughs> days of their lives out in the world, is that when you set up your constructor and you set up your initializer list, you should always set up the the initializer list in the same order you have everything defined here in the class header, because especially if you have pointers and things like that, because the no matter what you do over here. The compiler will compile everything in and set everything up top to bottom. So the shines will always be initialized first and the coins will always be initialized second. And again, this does not necessarily matter for this example, but for things where you're having pointers and, thing, and all sorts of crazy memory management. I saw a guy that worked at Midway and all, all, all the sports game get very humbled by that one. Or it's like, oh my goodness, you thought you were initializing something, but you weren't. So the initializer list sets both things up to zero. There's nothing in the, there's nothing in here for the block for the constructor. So our contract is set. Both member variables are set, and we're good to, to move on to things. The get functions are always easy, almost always. Get or return, 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 return shines, return coins, and so add shine. And I think I, I set this up so that I said if shines is greater than zero, then shines plus equals shines. Just so you had a, a check all in there because I'm like add negative shines, you should never be able to take away. Right? So just moving on with that. If and if uh, coins is gr uh, I'm sorry, lowercase c coins, if coins is greater than zero, then coins plus equals lowercase. Okay, so there we go there. And so moving on, can Mario go to Corona Mountain? That one's just pretty easy. We just say it return shines greater than or equal to 50. You don't need to put if statements in for something like this because a relational operator, you know, equals, not equals, greater, greater than or equal, less than, less than or equal, the six of them, they always return a bool, a true false. There's no reason to go if this is true, return true. If this is false, return false when this will return the boolean that comes out of this already. It's a one-liner, you're already done. 
Okay, fair enough. And so the, the last harder part, it just, it's not really hard or anything, is just to say convert the blue coins to, it convert blue coins to shells. So what I can do here is I can just say if the number of coins greater than or equal to 10, there's many ways to do this. I was, when I set this up, I was fancy, but now that I'm talking and thinking and trying to juggle six things at once, it's not as, uh, not as coherent as it was earlier. And so I could say, okay, I need to have 10 coins so that I can convert that into a shine. And if you really want to, just to kind of, if you want to use a while loop, just since I'm just talking and blabbing on, I could say something like this. I really can. While the number of coins is greater than or equal to 10, subtract 10, and then add a shine. So if I had 22 of them, I would be down, I would go from 22 to 12 to 2, so I'd have two coins left over, and I'd have two more shines. I think that should do it, but the best way to do that now is to test everything out. We should have everything working now, so let's see what happens. Okay, so Mario needs 50 shines. I've got zero of everything. So I've got, let's convert, make sure zero stays zero, and zero goes to zero, doesn't crash or anything fancy like that. Okay, add a shine. I got 24 shines now. Okay, fair enough. What if I try to add a negative amount of shines? Stays at 24. What if I try to add blue coins and I try to add a, num a negative number of them? Stays at zero. What if I tried to add uh, 249 coins and I now have 249 coins and I convert? So that should go from, I should now go from 24 shines to 48 shines and nine blue coins. And I do. And if I try to do it again, <coughs> nothing occurred because there's not 10 blue coins and so I still Mario still needs 50 shines and even now if I go ahead and I add 11 more blue coins and I say you know Mario still needs 50 shines he's got all the materials to make 50 shines but he needs that final step here to go ahead and say oh he's got 50 now Mario can go to Corona Mountain and now Mario can go get Bowser and then just to finish everything up just to or thank you for playing Super Mario Sunshine. I can't. I am not Charles Martinet, the voice of Mario. I will not try. The voice is already cracking up from talking today. So anyway, so that covers pretty much everything I wanted to cover in this activity. So your last homework is, or the, the last thing for this week is the homework assignment. When it comes down to, whoops, did he find it real fast? Where did it go? Where did it go? Homework assignment for the. Um, kitchen oven problem. So you're, this is <laughs> this is basically you know the 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 natural extension of things. There are six private variables and a ton of functions to simulate what an oven is. And so, you know, if you've been able to to nail this out with you know the game data object and the uh, the previous one, the guessing game number. You're gonna do great. There's no, there's no doubt. You're gonna be do, doing great. And if not, you can always ask me questions about this problem or any other problem as you're working through it. So swordb at cod.edu is a great way to get a hold of me, as as always for you guys. Or this is, you know, since this is more of a private uh, YouTube video, you guys can comment below, and only I will, only I and other people in your class will see the comments that you've seen. So thanks as always for sticking with it. And uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good day.